we got to talk about, of course, your years with the Leafs. Uh, most of the fans would kill me out there if I didn't ask you. Tell us a little bit about your years with Toronto. Well, being with Toronto, uh, it, it was uh, the place that I always wanted to be. And then coming up uh, to Toronto, uh, and then uh, winning Stanley Cups, and you know, like saying, you know, scoring the winning goal in a in a game, and the the the, the name clear the track. I hit two guys down and uh, uh, I didn't get a penalty and that's how I got the name clear the track. They had a record, at, you know what I mean, number one in the hit raid for six weeks. They had a book written uh, about me. Uh, it was 12 weeks it was the number one seller and, and they're still selling it now. So uh, Toronto has been great. Uh, hockey's been fantastic. Uh, I, I've got in the NHL. I got 11 Stanley, uh, 11. Uh, Henri Richard's got 11 Stanley Cups, but I got 11 uh, hat tricks in the NHL. So uh, I, I think that I've accomplished quite a bit, and uh, to get out and help something like this uh, is fantastic. And, and tomorrow I'm refereeing uh, a game uh, just north of Toronto. Well, you got a busy schedule ahead of you then. And I was in Calgary last night. So, for the Montreal game? No, no. I was in there for uh, a dinner. Oh, okay. For, this, for the Summer Olympics. Oh, perfect. So you keep yourself busy then, or try to as much as you can? As much as you can. And there's so many great people out there that, uh, you know, and the fans, eh? there, there, there's so many great fans. Uh, and that's one thing that, you know, you, you've got to understand that it's, it's you people out there that, you know, that made us. Because if it was no fans, we'd be nothing. Do you think that's something that's lost? I mean, with those statements you just made right there, I think that most people could differ, differentiate the, pe the period where you played hockey in the NHL as compared to some of the guys that play in the NHL now. Do you think that it's more of a money game, it's look out for number one, and, you know, hey, if the fans are there, the fans are there? Well, the, the fans, that they can't afford it in Canada. Mm -hmm. We're going to be without hockey in Canada, and we started the NHL in, you know what I mean, in, in Canada. Exactly. So, uh, right now, uh, it, it's it's a thing that we're in we're in big big trouble mm -hmm. because of the U.S. Everybody gets paid the U.S. money, and everybody is is getting the big salaries. And who's paying for it? It's the fans are paying for it. And exactly. if the fans don't go, then the, the hockey is out. What do you think about this profit sharing idea? They were in Ottawa, Ronald Corey, Ken Dryden, and most of the, all of the team owners for the Canadian clubs. Do you think profit sharing is a good idea? Is this going to be the savior of the NHL? Well, we, whatever the savior is, the, the, the thing is what's happening, the salaries are too big. Sure. I mean, the salaries are out of control. And uh, let's face it, if, if, if there's less hockey, there'll be less hockey players. So if, you know, if you're making a certain amount, say when I played hockey, they put a, a, a sort of a, a, a band on it. Like when you played junior hockey, you made junior B, you made 40 bucks. If you made junior A, you made 60. Mm -hmm. So and then when you got in the NHL, all you could get was 7,500. If you made uh, the American League, you got 4,500. So they had you, you know what I mean, jockeyed in that, and you couldn't do anything else. I asked for a $500 raise uh, when I when I was with New York, mm -hmm. and uh, they said no. So what was your uh, all-time favorite? Who was the team you really got jazzed up for to play against when you went into their barn? Well, I like, you know, Boston. I like Vancouver. I like, you know what I mean, that... Uh, when you're playing, you like them all. Like ice is ice, and uh, and the crowd is uh, like you know what I mean. If they're booing you, you love them. If they're cheering you, you you, you love them more. So, exactly. So every rink you go to, and when you score a few hat tricks and that, you sort of take a favor to a certain place. But Chicago, Chicago, the old Chicago arena was something else. The, the arena, the the, the organ and whoever sang the national anthem. Sure. It was absolutely, you could feel the people. 
you could feel the, 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 the inside you. You could feel that, you know what I mean? Like, and, and there there would be even tears come from in your eyes, you know what sure. I mean? Because it was such a, a, a great feeling, and you know the fans are Chicago fans, you know what <laughs> I mean? You know you've got to do something here. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that uh, you were a bit of a character when you played in the league. Is that, is that a safe assumption? Well, I, I was an entertainer. <laughs> I was an entertainer. I was a, a hockey player. I, I've done, you know, what I mean, I scored 20 goals for every team that I was with. Um, I, uh, I've accomplished in hockey what I wanted to. I've accomplished in business what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So all these things, I, you know, what I mean, that uh, I, I didn't go to school. Uh, my education. They say, how far did you go to school? I said four miles. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I would not uh, because I. I to this day, I, I do not read or write. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But if you're a handicap in one, you're stronger than the other. Sure. You know, so uh, I've got to thank my wife in, in a lot of ways because whenever the houses would go up, she'd say, act up and let's get the hell out of this town. <laughs>